um, the Ayurveda system, when it comes to Ayurveda system, it is more towards that it is clinical experience, documentation, case series, etc. Maybe there are some um, lab markers, few of the invasive markers, but in a neurological and a new degenerative neurodegenerative condition like Parkinson's, there is hardly uh, an evidence where we can show with conviction that Ayurveda works. However, we have been right from our first year of BMS to till date, we have been very well treating and taking care of Parkinson's disease. With this, we will try to share with you the translational medicine and its understanding that how over a period of time that can be utilized in accumulating evidence, not just clinically, but also from its understanding of the pathogenesis pathways uh, and try to bring it in a way that we are able to demonstrate that beyond the levodopas and carbidopas of conventional Parkinson's medicine, how comprehensive treatment is very uh, effective. We, would, we also would like to share that specifically in this case when Dr. Anagha and Dr. Sally will share with you that patient was for over a period of six months on Kapikachu and she only deteriorated. Kapikachu has not worked. Although it is supposed to be very rich in um, you know, uh, working over dopamine cells, why did it not work? And with, with, uh, or does such a kind of an approach of single herb or single drug be uh, replicated in cases of Parkinson's? So this would give you a fresh perspective on treating a case 80 year old female with very classical simple drugs and also the kind of challenges and limitations we had in uh, planning her treatment. Irrespective of that, she has shown some remarkable outcomes in short period of time. So we take you through the case. Dr. Anagha, Dr. Sally, please take over. Good afternoon, everyone. My, my name is Dr. Sally. I'm one of the uh, resident medical officers at Ayurveda Hospital. And today we are bringing before you a case of MBA. So first I will share our case with us. Oh, the major symptom of the patient was sickness all over the body, mainly involving the major joints and uh, tremors, which was mainly the loading tremor, which is characteristic of Parkinson. And uh, she was daily uh, having restlessness, she was uneasy, and she was having days three or four of her cough, and the disturbed sleep and constipation. And which I've been person with the patient for more than two years. And also it was a deterioration as a result of the Parkinson's disease. And um, she had been a known case of hypertension, diabetes mellitus and hypothyroidism for the past 23 years. And she had been on medication for the same. And um, the thing which we need to notice here is that we already know that Parkinson's disease already has a very a long latency period. So in this case, what happened was that the first uh, symptom which appeared was her hand tremors, and those were not those were ignored earlier because her neurological exam had came out normal. But when her tremors had increased, then only she was diagnosed as Parkinson's. So when she came to us, her daily activities were greatly affected. She was afraid to stand on her own, and she was in a condition where in her off period of the yoga, she required great amount of support. Next page, please, sir. So now come, I have already uh, explained about things like uh, sleep, but sleep was disturbed. Her uh, um, constipation was very prominent. And looking into the Ashtasana Pariksha and the Sivita Pariksha, what we can observe was that her, uh, her, she was mainly a Vada with the Pradhati person, and her Vada Prabhupada was very prominent. Was seen in the hard stools and the disturbed sleep pattern. And on the left side, you can see the MRI report, which states that there is uh, this degeneration in the, especially in the substantial eye drop. 
that is very characteristic uh, to Parkinson's disease. Next, please, please, sir. Uh, so now I will um, have let Dr. Anaga take over so that she can explain more about his and the Thank you, Dr. Anaga. Thank Good evening, one and all. I'm Dr. Anaka. So we'll be discussing about the Nidana Panjaka's diagnosis, uh, treatment principles, and the medicines and treatments we have given for the treatment for the patient here. So like uh, by evaluating the patients, by, by evaluation, evaluating uh, factors which would have led to the disease or which would have uh, contributed to the progression of the symptoms, we could find that patient has got exposed to various kinds of Vada Prabhupada Nidanas as well as Kaba uh, Hetus with regards to her Ahara, Vihara, Manasika Bhavas, as well as some of the Nidanathagara Rokas, especially Vibandha. She has been a, a chronic a constipation, a constipation patient since more than 20 years, which could have. Uh, which, which could have brought about the apana vaipunya, in turn, which, uh, which will cause uttarotra vada vritti. Also, uh, she is also a known case of diabetes, where the uh, kapha is in kledavastha already. And in addition to that, the prakrita vaya of the patient, that is the old age, is the additional factor which is uh, affecting the vada prakopa. So all those... Uh, the, all those factors might have contributed to the disease. So the potent Vada Vrtigara uh, Nidanas will cause some avarna to the sodhases in the body, which will again aggravate the already aggravated Vada because of so many causes. So that will uh, uh, aggravate all forms of Vada, especially Apana and Vyana Vada, though all the other forms of Vada, including Samana, Udana and Prana are equally involved and this could have led to the symptoms of the patients like Skalida Gatram, uh, uh, Chala Sangam, Kambam as well as Ibandam. So this is the uh, Sampraapti in concise. So like uh, well, next going to the uh, Vyavachera Nidana, though there are uh, different uh, differential diagnoses are available for Parkinson's disease, considering the symptoms of the patient we could consider uh, essential tremor as one of the DD for Parkinson's disease. But since in essential tremor, the tremor will be mostly postural, postural or kinetic in nature. But in the patient and in Parkinson's disease, it was mostly, it was only resting tremors. The next DD will be chorea. Also initially, the uh, although initially the patient had not presented with that involuntary movements, in between the course of the treatment, in one or two days, she had that issue, like involuntary movements of her body. But uh, in Korea, only involuntary movements will be present and rigidity is very less prominent. And next week, DD will be dystonia. In that also, only involuntary movements will be prominent with no rigidity. And hence, uh, in this case, with all the three classical symptoms of Parkinson's disease, that is bradykinesia, rigidity, and traumas, we could conclude this along with the support of evidence. And next, uh, going on to the treatment objective based on the requirement of the disease. So uh, our primarily objective of the treatment was to decrease the rigidity of the patient, to control her, to reduce her dependency, to make her con more confident in attending her day-to-day -day activities, as well as to regularize her uh, motions and to improve her sleep quality. Next, going to the Chikilsa Siddhanta. As it is an Avarna Janya Vyadhi, as we have discussed in the Santrakti, so we have to break that. We have to do the Santrakti Vikhadana. So the primary uh, line of treatment would be Vada Kabashamana, which could be attained through Sodo Shodana, Akni Dibana, as well as Ama Pajana. And later on, when the Vyadhi becomes Kevala Vyadhi, we should attempt to uh, Vada Shamana or Vada Harakam and later on the Sayana. And uh, move, next, moving on to the internal medicines, we have opted for such purposes. 
the patient was on multiple uh, dopamine precursors like syncopone and syntopa along with capicachu capicachu she was having for at least almost 6 months and with the, even with that medicines she was not able to improve she was not uh, she has not observed any improvement in her situation in fact her health was deteriorating in nature and that's uh, so she was not getting any improvement with those prescribed medicines so we thought of not to uh, address her parkinson's or her uh, that disease and it alone uh, more than that we have concentrated on that specific sampratthi vigadana that is amapajanam srodo shodanam and akni deepanam as well as vada nilomana and as we have already discussed about that vata prakopa as well as the kapa prakopa nidanas all the points are mentioned in the right page like what are the uh, nidanas which have caused the diseases including ahara vihara agandukam manasikam and nidana arthakara vikaras with uh, some graphic chart next page please sir so like uh, differential diagnosis also we have mentioned here I, we have mentioned the essential trauma but in between the treatment we have observed that involuntary movement that is the reason we have included chorea and dystonia among the differential diagnosis next page please sir and the objective of the treatment is also explained like primary objective was to address her stiffness of the body then to correct her bowel movements to improve her energy levels and to reduce her dependency to do her day to day activities and to improve the confidence level of the patient next page please sir so interrupting here uh, dr ranaka uh, would like to share with you uh, all of you here that right from the differential diagnosis then we come to the point of confirmatory uh, investigation so here in this case mri was already done and that was used as a conclusive report to confirm the diagnosis we take into account allopathy diagnosis ayurveda diagnosis we derive and try to assess the vyadhi avastha whether we are able to uh, treat that as sukha sadhya kashta sadhya or asadhya once that is done uh, then uh, bringing in the points of upadravas risk factors which are involved considering the presentation and comorbidities whether we need to refer the patient within ayurveda within ayurveda with a call has to be taken by a physician whether we will be able to treat it or not followed by that is an important thing of identifying the health need identification where there is a clear cut understanding which is between the patient and the physician making him or her aware about the immediate alleviations that is alleviate alleviation that is needed with respect to presenting complaints vital parameters ayurveda and allopathy followed by that if a condition needs something a roga shanti which we call it which cannot be uh, treated immediately but which takes a time and followed by that is a call of uh, health management uh, over a period of time with medicines with treatment there is also up front a discussion that happens where we are able to qualify whether the patient needs indoor treatment whether the patient needs outdoor treatment once that is done chikitsa siddhanta and chikitsa paddhati with respect to ahar vihar aushad and kriya is being established now we will also take you through the treatment uh, once the patient uh, plans for the treatment a uh, a discussion between a care entire care team wherein the primary physician supporting physician resident doctor the caregiving team all come into a communication and plan for the care we also up front identify any risks red flags vulnerability etc with respect to the safety of the patient that is to be kept in mind Dr. Nagar, please take over further. 
initial treatments uh, we have uh, planned for the uh, patient was Deshamula uh, to Shridhara, Shido Alpingam, Pratima Shanaksin, Mahatma Shanaksin, Mahatma and Alpingam, Mahatma Shanaksin. So, like, uh, for, to attain, to attain Vata Kabaharatun, there are so many conventional treatments that are available in Ayurveda, like Udvartanam, uh, Ruksha Svedam, Dhanyam Lathara, Dhanyam Lathidi and all. But by considering the age of the patient as well as the vellum of the patient, we have selected very mild form of Sveta, that is Drava Sveta. We have started with Dashamula Shridhara for the patient. Then for the Prana Rekshartam, as well as to improve her sleep quality, we have started with Shiro Abhyangam, Pradima Shanasyam and Pada Abhyangam. So after uh, seven days of treatment, we could, uh, we could observe some symptoms of Avarana Haratum in the patient. Clinically, in the form of reduction in, uh, reduction in stiffness of the body, then improving the energy levels of the patient, as well as her sleep was also improved almost after seven days of treatment. Hence, we started with uh, Kevala Vada Chikisa, like Vada Hara Chikisa, uh, Abhindam Nadi Swedam, Shirothara, and Matra Vasti. Actually, patient was not able to Call the medicine for Matra Vasti. It was informed uh, initially uh, during the initial consultation that patient had a uh, lax, lax uh, external sphincter, but we hoped that if it, it could administer the medicine to the main uh, ashram of Vata, that is Pakwashaya, and if the patient is able to hold that medicine, that would be uh, beneficial for the patient. So we tried one count of Matra Vasti, but the patient was not able to hold the medicines call the medicine of Matravasti, hence we have to stop the medicine in between. And while selecting the Nasya also, we have selected Pradimasha Nasim for the patient. Uh, as a Panchakarma treatment, patient is actually not indicated for Nasya Nasim as she is about 70 years of age, but still even uh, small dosages also we could not try in the fear of some, some cases it has reported earlier, like in some studies it has uh, mentioned like uh, there are chances of aspiration pneumonia issues in Parkinson's patient. Hence, we tried with very low amount, very low uh, uh, dosage of Pradimasha Nasya for the patient. So this, uh, this was the total plan of the patient. And uh, we have got good result with the, uh, we have got good result, uh, maybe not in, uh, not only in the aspect of Parkinson's symptoms, but overall we have got uh, with much improvement uh, in the confidence level as well as uh, the dependency of the patient has decreased. She was able to walk by herself. We have to be with her, but she, the patient came as a wheelchair bound stage, but from that stage, we could able to make her walk without support or without the help of wheelchair. For a detailed explanation of the outcome scale, Dr. Sally will take over. Uh, sir, if you could go back a few pages to our outcome page, please. The main outcome in the PRDs. Thank you. And uh, if you look at the first point, the stiffness all over the body. So as I first stated earlier, uh, the, she was having mostly um, uh, stiffness in the morning. That was the most time when she was having with all from Sintopa. Her last dosage of Sintopa was at about is 8 p.m. and then the next dosage was at about 8 a.m. So that was the longest period she was without in Doka. And uh, then the initially she was having body stiffness for about eight to four hours in the morning and gradually it reduced in such a way that towards the end uh, she was not needing much help in case of going to the workroom in the morning. She, uh, as I told you, her dignity was most noted in this case because she needed some person's assistance even in the workroom. So in the morning, she had to call someone up if she had to go there. So uh, towards the end, what we were able to observe was that she didn't need much help from her caregiver. She was able to wake up on her own and she was uh, able to go to the washroom. And even on, uh, so I'm only speaking of the, uh, the last few days. And um, even on days in which the stiffness had existed, it was only for as long as one hour 
uh, compared to the three to four hours in the morning. Now, in case, when we are checked for the rigidity of our arm, in hand, in experience, typical uh, with this thing in Parkinson's patient. So it was present throughout, even towards the end, but uh, it was not as this before. This we had checked during the off period of Sandropa, uh, that was uh, her evening dosage, just before her evening dosage. And uh, and uh, next is uh, her eye blinking. So one of the most uh, the major symptoms a Parkinson patient has is the blank stare. So on, when she came to us, her blinking rate was uh, very less. It was less than five, five to six per minute. But later on, towards the end, it uh, towards the end, though her energy levels had improved, her blinking was not less. And one of the major changes which we had noticed is in the nature of the bowel movement. And initially, she had very hard stools. And towards the end, uh, she was having semi-solid and uh, semi-solid uh, normal to normal motions. And it was uh, one of the things which she had complained most about was while passing motion, she was feeling very tired after the passing of these motions. She just had to sit there on the bowel for some time and then she was able to come out. And that, towards the end, what she told me is she was not feeling that uh, tired as before. She was yeah, after she was finished, she was able to come out just then and then. And uh, uh, next one is um, her nature of uh, uh, her nature of sleep. So initially, the nutrition time was as long as five point five to six hours, but later on, the, uh, the quantity of sleep improved, and so did the. Uh, Hours. Like it was as long as seven hours, and the initiation time had decreased to 15 to 20. And the pin rolling movement, it was present asymmetrically and it was present throughout till the end. But uh, her uh, vitality levels were one thing which had improved drastically. Initially, when she came to us, her confidence levels were really low, and she was feeling really hopeless. She was down both mentally and physically, and she used to fatigue very easily. But Towards the end, what happened was her, her lovely levels and improved, and she was even uh, enthusiastic enough to take sunbath in the Dekini. And she, before she went away from here, she had even uh, sang a uh, daga for us, and she was very enthusiastic to uh, teach her students also. On most days, but uh, she was not able to take classes continuously, or she had to skip Sundays when she was feeling very tired. But that uh, had decreased towards the end. So her general weakness had uh, decreased, and she was able to walk on her own for most of the time. So uh, I will divide this into two on on syndopa and off syndopa. On on syndopa, she was able to swing her hands and walk uh, almost in a very normal way with respect to her age. But uh, on her off period, I would say her confidence level had increased and for a wheelchair bound patient, she had become, uh, she had typical Parkinson's uh, gait, like Western and gait with slightly stooping forward affection in the arms, wrist, and uh, hip region. And uh, these were the major symptoms we improved. And uh, not only on a physical level, we were able to uh, uh, improve her quality of life as well. Now, I'll be um, going back to Dr. Nanaka to explain on the rest. So the medicines we have prescribed for the patient at the uh, time of discharge was then 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 Adloma DS was given to normalize her. Though the motions were almost near normal, but in alternate days, it would become little hard in nature. Hence, we have given as a precaution. Then external medicines were Shirabala 101 uh, to do in Pradimarsha form daily. Then Chinjadi Thailam whole body application, then uh, Dhanvantaram and Mahamasha Thailam. And Dhanadi Kashayam was opted because it is Vada Kabahara in nature and it has a good, uh, it has a good uh, effect on neuro uh, diseases. Then Dhanvantaram Gulike has been given uh, as a purpose of Padana Lomana. Ashwagandha Arishtam was given for, uh, it, is, it has a Brahmana, Mekha and Dibana property. Then the, the Rasna Dashamula Kridam has given as a uh, Rasayana and other external medicines were also added. And uh, she has been uh, prescribed with uh, some <clears throat> kind of regimens to be followed. Uh, 
some of those were already followed by the patient but still we have asked her to uh, take time to chew her food uh, uh, with longer duration as well as more vigorously and to do some facial exercises to improve the rigidity and uh, to sing as he, she is a carnatic teacher she already her singing has improved but still we have asked her to sing loudly then some uh, mental exercise to improve uh, memory some puzzles like thing we have mentioned for her and uh, she has been asked to do a review after two weeks so this is the overall impo improvement we have got with the patient and next handing over to dr janthana for further addition thank you dr ranaga dr sally so uh, as we began with a point about neuroinflammation and a uh, systemic uh, inflammation that runs parallel in all kinds of neurological conditions which is now uh, uh, appearing in the uh, current scientific journals this has been very well uh, uh, understood documented and talked about in ayurveda medical conditions and if we look into vata vyadi we very well know the uh, etiology which is multifactorial right from dietary uh, inflammatory uh, diet to um, activities that are either too strenuous or obesogenic in nature so from both the kinds of presentations of extreme puffa as well as vayu we find that there is both the etiological pathways one which results into an extreme uh, vitiation or aggravation of vayu the other which leads to kapha uh, increase so here in this case if we look at patient was already diagnosed with hypothyroidism was diagnosed with hypertension as well as type 2 diabetes mellitus so over a period of time there was vata increase there was kapha decrease and pitta dushti we can although she was cognitively very fine but some amount of pitta disruption had begun with all this of nidana and nidan arthkar rogas her ama which was resulting into um, uh, gross symptoms like constipation acidity leading to involvement of primary rasa dhatu leading to klama weight loss over a sub, over um, a period of time with subsequent involvement of mamsa medas asthi majja and when it came to that level where she started showing some of the signs of neurodegeneration it was too late so this is one of the challenge that happens for neurological conditions and parkinsons is that late detection by the time the pres patient presents to a neurologist or a neurophysician um, it is too late and mostly it is clinically uh, diagnosed Mo very few markers or mri is used to diagnose that and by the time patient reports normally to a, an ayurveda physician patient is already on levodopa carbidopa etc many a time psychosis and those kind of behavioral issues have set in so at that time there is an extra presentation of extra pyramidal symptoms which comes as a side effect of these antipsychotic drugs mainly which mimics the presentation of parkinsons which is tremors dyskinesia slowness so we really as ayurveda physicians need to demarcate and differentiate is it the real parkinsons which is coming out is it under the effect of antipsychotic drugs that the patient is presenting tremors dystonia etc so this is something where with a fresh mind where we need to establish a samprapti which is about parkinsons as well as which is also a samprapti which is created because of additional drugs here i would also like to share that we have also seen lot of young diabetics young patients uh, and as well as long standing diabetics who are on metformin and its derivatives presenting with parkinson so this is an area an interesting area where 
physicians can observe and uh, study into the effect of anti-diabetics OHS and Parkinson's. So here you can see that there are pro-inflammatory markers, systemic inflammation, which is underlined, and that leads to activated microglia, microglia. So this priming of microglia is very important, which leads to dopamine loss. And how our panchkarma treatments, next slide, where on the motor modulation, our, uh, our therapies, especially external therapies, as well as the Murdhani uh, Tailas, all that could play a very important role. This is an area of research where we could look into the scope of Shirodhara, Shirovasti, Talam, Pratima, uh, which could play a significant role in reducing uh, and controlling the extra pyramidal symptoms, as well as it would work on the dopamine loss which happens. So today's uh, 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 publication that has come just today, uh, early morning in, in NEJM says about, apart from the systemic inflammation, there is also the nasal microbiota, which plays an important role in Parkinson's because anosmia is a first sign where loss of smell or hyposmia, which could be a premonitory sign of Parkinson's. So we can very well say that there is nasyam, pratimash nasyam, which is, uh, which is laid down in some hitas. Probably acharyas could have foreseen nasal microbiota and blood-brain barrier as one of the hallmark pathways for Parkinson's disease. Next slide. So uh, take away of this case as Ayurveda's generic focus across Parkinson's care stages could involve at a whole person level, identifying the status of Vikritis, which arise out of impaired doshas, obstructed dhatus, disrupted or impaired agni, excessive early or intense ama, number of srotuses that are involved. This is contributed by multifactorial nidanas, diet, lifestyle, state of mind, external nidanas like any medications patient is on. Also, we have find, especially uh, patients of Parkinson's, and when we do a retrospective analysis, patients working in a very high stressful um, uh, prof uh, professions like in bank where they need to take care of money, law, etc., where there is a kind of a constant fear or insecurity. This has been consistently found that patients start showing some of the signs of Parkinson's. Correcting Vikriti at a whole system level where we try to address the host environment or microbiome, then this Vikrit is looking uh, uh, into at local level, constipation, sleeplessness, those symptom alleviation needs to be considered. When we look into core Parkinson's, we need to keep in mind neuroinflammation, systemic inflammation, neurodegeneration, and therefore plan neuroprotective uh, measures with respect to medicines, therapies, keeping in mind extra pyramidal symptoms, arising out of drugs that the patient is on. Where Ayurveda, especially Acharya Charak has told about Jara Rasayana, inflammaging is something which we need to consider that inflammation arising out, chronic inflammation, which is a resultant or a physiological process arising out of premature aging and aging. Then we could, contribute immensely in restoring virtuous cycle of good health, thereby improving nidra, agni, malam, mutra, manas, and overall well-being. Next slide. Leaving a thought that Ayurveda's scope of research in Parkinson's is at the point of addressing and understanding ama and agni in a much better way where we could bring out them as a predictive factors for Parkinson's. Considering neuroinflammation, which happens as a result of a crosstalk between rasa dhatu up to majja dhatu, considering jara rasayana, inflammaging, and keeping in mind that 
in this case for example patient was on copy kachu for number of months but yet not responded so comprehensive chikitsa approach with classical but simple drugs could be a way forward motor modulation and panchkarma treatment is something that should be studied rigorously so i would uh, end here and request all of you to share your thoughts questions for the for the speakers kindly go ahead and ask thank you yes yes ms padma please go ahead dr padma uh uh hi uh good evening doctors uh this is uh vidya here i am uh i've joined as in the name of padma my mother uh yes. she is actually diagnosed with this parkinson's the last year so uh i'll just briefly tell you i'll not uh, describe the uh the whole case but then i just want to know because she doesn't live here she's come to bangalore to visit me she lives in hyderabad is it possible for us to start off with this treatment i'll bring her to you in domlur branch to start off with the treatment then is the gap in between allowed so that she'll come back later after a while after a short break is it possible uh, does it have the same effect you know uh, how do we know about this how do we you know take it about because uh, yes same how do we take this we would we would uh, definitely able be able to uh, guide your mother uh, as mm -hmm. we go along and assess her stage of parkinsons effect of medicines that already she was on and from there mm -hmm. on through a detailed consultation we would be able to identify her needs current needs and then guide her completely my question is if you the patient was much younger right was uh, 50 years old how would the treatment plan have changed for the same set of symptoms presenting symptoms in history if the, the patient was having better rogi bala how would your treatment plan have changed so here in this case as we identified that kafa vata were already uh, in a uh, in a state uh, where Uh, it was impacting from rasa to majja dhatu there was also intense ama which was present so considering the age and bala of the patient shodhana was not possible had it been a younger patient with enough bala uh, we would have definitely been able to address uh, uh, the deeper ama through shodhana treatments which would have helped uh, immensely to get the results so shodhana while here it appears that it was purva karma however the chikitsa siddhanta was not compromised with respect to carrying out vatanulomana or mrudu shodhana but had it been a younger patient a thorough shodhana would have definitely helped to get over uh, the uh, dosha clearance the improvement in we can't hear you sir the improvement in the upds was not very high right so while you got functional improvements which are shown but the upds scores have not uh, shown uh, drastic improvement any comments on that the way the international scales are designed and the way we are measuring functional outcomes at the parkinsons level mm -hmm. right so do you see some observations uh, dr sally dr anika I I would like to comment on this one. Hello. Yes, Doctor Bhatt. Please go ahead. Yeah, in younger age group, when the Parkinson's patients come to us, we will be able to do any virajana karma. much better than in the basti karma first we will be doing the virechana and then you know after the full course of virechana we are going to do the uh, so because we had many patients of uh, uh, parkinsons uh, probably i have treated approximately 
till now about 370 cases of uh, Parkinson's and uh, usually Parkinson's is an aging process problem. So we think that, you know, you know, so in the younger age group, if at all the Parkinson's disease uh, patients are there, then we will be able to do, you know, Virecha and then the uh, Vastikarma may be much better. Not only that, we are going to add not only the Kapikachu, Kapikachu Churna is okay, 5 to 10 grams, you know, we are going to give. But in addition to Kapikachu, we, if we give Ashwagandha, Rani, Bala, Rasta, these are all the medicines which we, if we give, especially Ashwagandha and Brahmi, the effect will be much more. We, right now we have, you know, a patient who is having a, you know, who is a very VIP patient, you know, uh, who is uh, about 80 years old. He is having uh, Parkinson's, uh, very much complications are also there, but he is improving. But we have added uh, Ashwagandha and Brahmi along with Kapikachu, and he is also taking Sindopa, but his improvement is better than what he was taking, you know, when he was taking, you know, uh, uh, Sindopa. Treatment. All Panchakarma treatments we are going to do and the improvement will be definitely there whether the person is in the younger age group or in the you know, elderly people. This is my experience about Parkinson disease, Kampa Vata. We say that you know, it is Vepathu in Ayurveda, Vepathu or Kampa Vata. And uh, uh, some of the, you know, we are having actually contact with uh, other uh, neurologists here and they also see M the, the, uh, MRI and other things uh, and they, we compare a person who was having a uh, uh, treatment with me about uh, five years back, he came to me and then we once again, you know, we did the MRI and the Livdopa the, the, or the uh, dopamine uh, values, of, of course, dopamine uh, the values may not change too much, but still the improvement will be there. So the improvement we have seen in uh, MRI five years back and the present one. So neurologists also say that there is some improvement. This person is having, uh, you know, Parkinson's in more than about uh, 12 years, uh, but his condition is much better now. Glad to note that, Dr. Bhatt. Uh, any observations from the team of Domlur uh, doctors, Dr. Jankana, Dr. Sally, Dr. Anagar, to Dr. Bhatt's comments? Sir, uh, we agree to the point that a thorough shodhana uh, is something that gives good outcomes. However, by the time, uh, mostly the presentation is that we see a patient in a very deteriorated and very debilitating state. So at that time, it is a challenge to uh, prescribe and also the point that we don't get like classical textbook picture of pure Parkinson's. We have a lot of comorbidities, coexisting conditions underlying. So we need to plan uh, Shodhana also in a way that it gives a fine balance of all those comorbidities as well. And to your point, sir, that you asked about UPDRS scale earlier, there, I would like to share my observation that all neurological conditions, including Parkinson's, stroke, standard scales like NIH, UPDRS, Lindop, etc., are very good in, in very gross measurements. Patient is able to do this, able to do that, etc. But there are a lot of minor and micro uh, changes which are visible, which are closely visible. Uh, to the caregiving team uh, uh, day in and day out and also to the bystanders and the care providers at home. So these are some of the limitations that are not being captured. For example, this patient who was wheeled in when she came in and we had to really hold her by uh, and to put her on the chair to take her to her room, etc. In day three, day four, she gave up the wheelchair. She could walk to the treatment room. She could walk back. So none of these things, while this measures grossly on scales. And then when she left, while she was getting discharged, she said, I came in a wheelchair. I'm going on my own with 
very less support she could sit in a car by herself so it is very important uh, at this point of time that we as physicians as clinicians also contribute to the research committee about clinical changes that take over a period of care which are not captured well in these skills so if you look at the validation of these skills in some of the trials uh, these scales would have been used. And when it is consistent with the outcome, it is put into practice. But there is definitely a need to brainstorm, to write about these scales and to really add to that so the updated version comes into practice. So I was asking uh, the point that how would you refine these international scales with this experience? So, in fact, in the case presentation of this kind, it would be very useful to know what are the parameters that are currently not captured in the standard scale, right? So that is going to be very helpful. Number two, I think the point that uh, if you take this patient, when uh, we have done treatment in this form, which is a lighter treatment, uh, how long do you think uh, the, the, the benefits will be sustained? Because you've done a light treatment, is it a temporary improvement which will again revert back to the original, you know, bad condition? So, what is the plan for sustenance in such a person with poor health? So, there was also a point that uh, uh, this uh, concept of ahar, vihar, aushad, and kriya. So, a lot of these dosha imbalances also from day-to-day -day incompatible food, skipping food, not eating right breakfast. So in her case, it was that intake of oats, millets, et cetera, leading to constipation, leading to bloating, gas, acidity, et cetera. So this care, although it was for a shorter period of time, it was an orientation and unlearning for the patient and for the family to revisit her food, to revisit her vihara, aushadas, and then a therapy which was done to alleviate those immediate uh, aggravating factors which were there. She has been guided to follow the rest one, of one the more three connect, things. Point. One more connected point is where are the biomarkers? We didn't see anything on biomarkers for such a patient. If, uh, were there any biomarkers traced? Clinical biomar uh, lab biomarkers were not traced. We took MRI as a confirmatory uh, marker. So there yeah, is the this need in... Yes, Dr. Bhatt? Yes, yes. See, some of the neurologists here, I've seen them, you know, they are actually, you know, taking not only MRI, but also they are... Uh, taking uh, you know, the measurement of uh, uh, dopamine. Some people, they are doing it actually, you know, not all. They don't believe, it. they don't depend completely on that, but they do it actually. Zero to one picrogram, you know, what I have seen. We are also trying to understand actually, you know, this, what is a picrogram and nanogram, you know, these, uh, you know, zero to 30 picrogram, is the normal level of uh, the uh, this one? If at all it is in the in the lower level, lower it goes to minus also sometimes. So then you know they say that oh this is actually you know Parkinson's. The lower the level, the more uh, the Parkinson's symptoms will be there. If at all it is in the higher level, that is about 20, 30 like that, then you know they may not have such kind of thing. This we have observed, but our this is not our study. But I have seen, you know, people because we are getting number of uh, uh, Parkinson's disease patients. So uh, these may be biomarkers. Otherwise, there are no definite biomarkers uh, in allopathy also. But clinical symptoms in Ayurveda, if we understand, we diagnose in the very, very, very early stage. You know, in fact, there was one orthopedic surgeon who was having this one. I told him that, see, you are slowly developing, you know, Parkinson's. By the symptoms only, we can very well understand. So it was later on confirmed after about three, four months, you know, then neurologists confirmed actually. So Ayurvedic diagnosis is really very good, even though we don't have too many markers. But our clinical understanding 
and also the prakriti of the patient age of the patient all these things are going to give us a great clue of you know perfect diagnosis of kampavata and one more thing i would like to say in here in medanta what we do in every case not only the uh, this uh, parkinson disease especially in parkinson disease we try to adopt some of the pranayama and also yoga they are really very very effective in uh, this one we have seen and also we have visited some of the yoga centers where they do the parkinson disease by yoga and really i tell you uh, i was astonished to see some patients after the, uh, just now you know rajiv sir told after the treatment what you know we have to do whether they are going to maintain that condition or they are going to in, you know their their disease is going to increase if at all we adopt a yoga also along with our ayurveda probably they may not develop the disease the recurrence may not be there some improvement will be there and then maintenance will be maybe much much better we are adopting some of these things you know in medanta here in parkinsons as well as in other patients also yeah. so one point here on markers is that while dopamine is being measured we would definitely consider that the only limitation is that patients normally are already on dopamine uh, agonist like uh, levodopa carbidopa so it gives a false picture of an elevation especially patients who are not on any medications we should definitely try to measure that and see the impact yeah but doctor yeah but i think the point is apart from dopamine levels considering the mechanisms that you spoken about inflammation you did talk about it you talked about the gut multiple points you're talking about so to connect those with underlying chemical uh, biochemical status is a very important thing which you're missing yes so it's not only about dopamine so let us not defend it that way i think there is scope to to really establish that data right? yes also would like to welcome some senior i with the doctors who have joined uh, from from outside of ayurveda uh, dr pranita joshi uh, dr usha ib then dr uh, presume s satish i'm not sure whether he's doctor or if he can introduce but welcome dr pranita and all dr shifa perhaps dr rajkumar for joining this uh, session uh, in case and dr hiba ismail so in case any of you uh, would like to ask any queries you are most welcome it's quickly the next 3 4 minutes we can then conclude ma'am i have a question over here yes dr blash yeah so i just want to uh, ask that uh, what is the probability of the food interaction in in the in the parkinsons because the patient is taking sindopa and at times it has been noted like uh, even Uh, not even the type of food but also the uh, food intervals in terms in uh, in connection with the sindopa there could be some uh, you know changes in the symptoms so if you can throw some light on this i would like to understand your question a bit better dr abilash your uh, question is towards food interaction or is it timing of food is it like specific both, food and effect both, on sindopa both ma'am ma'am both the food interaction and the intervals so while uh, we have not studied in terms of food interaction with sindopa but i would like to share with you that patient was on multiple doses of sindopa like 6 am 11 am 4 pm 8 pm etc so the uh, those intervals were normally like 4 hourly 6 hourly by the time the effect of the first uh, dose comes down the second is given normally how the cycle is to improve the motor function stiffness etc so we had planned our treatments accordingly that over a period of time we were able to taper off in those two inter like intervals like 4 4 pm 11 pm etc 11 am so where even ir, in spite of tapering of those doses and when ayurveda um, therapy was given or uh, or aushadha was given 
that motor modulation which i spoke about about patient getting stiff rigid not able to move we had seen that even off syndopa patient was doing well on those intervals so that is one thing that we have observed regarding food and its interaction with syndopa we haven't seen any uh, thing like that probably we will do that and keep a track of it okay okay ma'am so i'm playing the role of uh, concluding the session uh, so dear dr sally dr anakha dr jankana from ayurvedic domlur hospital uh, thank you for your presentation we really appreciate it and i think uh, dr tamala good to see you uh, and namaste yeah so i think what we wanted to just say is that this series will continue every week thursday 3 pm talk evidence at ayurved will will continue by different teams of doctors dr sally and dr anagar took the first step and inaugurated this program the series of programs on which we are we applaud them so let's just thank you for a job well done and uh, you know there were some technical hitches in the prop in the beginning but that is kind of inevitable murphy's law operated but i'm sure that in time to come uh, we'll all be able to make it very crisp and you know share a lot of uh, uh, relevant information in we will also create an email id into which you could probably share queries so that in the following case thing if you got any you know strong objections or strong observations uh, that can be shared with uh, the doctor so that they can respond in the next session if you are not able to immediately bring it up now so this is something where we you know are able to engage within the doctor fraternity and ayurveda doctor fraternity and uh, help improve uh, each other you know strengthen each other through this interaction so uh, thank you everybody and uh, have a good evening namaste namaste